morning, friends. It's the last week of January, and we are going to finish talking about responsibility. And we have learned that responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. And the most important question for us to ask about responsibility is, what does God expect from us? So this month, we've spent the whole month learning about some things God expects from those who love him. One is to love God. Then we learned about loving your neighbor. We learned about sharing what we have. We learned that God expects us to work hard. And last week, I hope you had a chance to serve with your family as you learned to use your gifts and your talents wisely to make the most of the gifts that God has given you in your life to bless others. All right, so friends, today we are going to finish learning um, about something God expects from us, and it's use your words wisely. Be careful with your words. So our lesson today is going to come from the New Testament in Ephesians. If you remember, if you can open your Bible halfway, and then the second half of your Bible, about halfway again, you'll be somewhere near the New Testament. Now Ephesians is in this very last section, and if you open that part about another half or so, you'll be pretty close. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read um, some different verses between 29 and 32. So Ephesians 4 in the New Testament, verses 29 through 32, to help us learn about using our words wisely. All right, so I'm going to read this to you. You can follow along. Okay. And I pray, pray for him, but so that he will lead to him, raise up the help of him, if you let him, and to him, him. Do you mean to tell me that it wasn't helpful for you when I was talking with my mouth full of stale marshmallows? I cannot believe that. Do you know what? When I shoved my mouth full of those marshmallows and read this scripture to you, you couldn't even understand it. It was not helpful for you. I wasn't using my words in a way that were helpful. And friends, I want to do that because this scripture is all about how we can use our words wisely. So as I read it again, I want you to put on your listening ears and listen for ways that our words are so powerful. This scripture tells us that our words can do things that are sad or bad and our words can do things that are good. And so we want to learn to use our words to do the good things. Ephesians 4 verse 29 through 32. When you talk, do not say harmful things, but say what people need, words that will help others become stronger. Then what you say will help those who listen to you. And do not make the Holy Spirit sad. The Spirit is God's proof that you belong to Him. Never shout angrily or say things to hurt others. Never do anything evil. Be kind and loving to each other. Forgive each other just as God forgives you in Jesus. Friends, I read here that our words have the ability to cause harm and hurt and to make God sad. Oh, friends, I never want to make God's Holy Spirit sad, especially with the words that I say. I'm thankful that this scripture also tells us, though, exactly how we should talk to avoid hurting, being harmful, or making God sad. And it says that we should use words that help others become stronger. And that will help those who listen to us. That we should be kind and loving to each other and forgive each other because God forgives us in Jesus. So friends, if you were trying really hard at something that was difficult and you were having a hard time and a friend was standing beside you and they said, come on, you can do it, I believe in you. You're doing great, you can do this. Would you rather have that friend who's encouraging and helpful with their words or would you rather have the friend who's like, come on, just give up, you're never gonna get it. Is that very helpful? That doesn't make me feel stronger. Does it feel make you feel stronger? That makes me feel discouraged and hurt. And friends, I don't want to be that friend who says ugly, hurtful things with my mouth that causes somebody to be sad or hurt. I want to use the words that help others, help others that are kind and that show love. So of all the words in your vocabulary, you can say 
that you can choose to use each day, I want you to know that to be responsible, God expects you to use words that help others, H-E-L-P, help. God expects us to show, use words that show kindness, that are kind, K-I-N-D, kind. And that God expects us to use words that show love, L-O-V-E, love. Now, whose love do you think our words show? Our words show love from ourselves sometimes, right? When we say, I love you, I care about you. But you know what, friends? Our words can also show others God's love. And that is so important that while we're here, we use our words to show others how very much God loves them. I have really enjoyed this lesson this week. It's been a good reminder for me. And if your um, adults in your life are honest, it's a great reminder for all of us every day because we say so many things from the time we wake up until the time we go to bed. And sometimes we know that our words are not helpful and they're not kind and they don't show love. So friends, I want you to think about what it would be like in this world if the only way we used our words was to help, to be kind, and to show love. I wish that for your family and for your life. Um, and I pray that we can all do a better job being responsible with our words. Let's say our memory verse one more time. Suppose you can be trusted with something very little. Then you can be trusted with something very large. Luke 16, verse 10. All right, friends, we're going to have a little prize drawing. I wanted to keep this short so it didn't take away from Bible class. I've divided us into groups of three or four families. Your family last names, so if there's more than one child, it's the family, um, are all on a slip of paper except for mine. Um, and I've split them up into eight groups. I've numbered them by eight. I've got my things here, and I'm going to draw number one. Group one says, da, 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 da. And these are in no order. I just shuffled them up and put them in groups. Uh, Holcomb, Noah's family, uh, Della's family, Hazel and Harper's family, and Patrick's family. So I'll be coming your way, guys, with a game for your family. Have a great week. I love you so much. Bye-bye.